in the early 1900s, all hell broke out. A new disease has been spread throughout the United States of America. That disease has started in humans. Doctors and researchers don't know the cause of its problem. All they know is that is what, is what the disease does to the person. The disease attacks the central system of the brain. Can anyone tell me what that is? The central system? What is the central system? Killing off all thinking and kindness. The person gets horrible blisters, high fevers, and most of all, dot madness. Dot. What? When did that happen? You, you care to explain yourself? Okay, so the disease doesn't kill people, but it fucks them up pretty good, and people have been killed. People have been tied to a tree and locked in a cell. Why is it those three specific things? You know, you got disease going rampant, and one of the biggest side products is people literally being tied to a tree. That doesn't make sense. The disease is passed to animals. The story has been passed through the years. My grandfather told me this story. My great-grandfather, Darnell Charles, <laughs> stupid name, was a was an Filipino farmer in the United States. He was a free man. Many years passed since slavery was demolished. My great-great-grandfather lived with my great-great-grandmother. No shit. They were always a happy couple. Never got into a serious fight. Let's call them both Grandpa and Grandma. For the sake of God. One flaw. Great, great, right? You never burn around. You don't, you literally don't know if, how well the relationship was. They could have had a couple of huge fights in there. Secondly, what? For the sake of God? You're gonna call him Grandpa and Grandma for the, for the sake of God? Under the glistening bright sun, my Grandpapa was cutting logs. He loved to woodcut. <laughs> Excuse me? Grandmama would always make carvings out of them. As you see, they're very artistic and creative. You didn't put a picture in the story to know. Which all of my family has. The ability to think fast and react, that, that comma was just unnecessary. As my grandpa was cutting logs, he noticed the gray, old-fashioned newspaper on the deck. So he picked it up and read the newspaper. He froze at the sight of the front page. Disease breaks into Chicago the third. Why does that why? Is this just a Spanish story that's poorly translated? I'm not even joking. I would not be shocked at this point. Be careful of this new disease. Doctors have not yet found a cure. Be sure to check for all symptoms such as blistering of the skin, high fevers, insanity, cannibalism, and acting as if being a zombie. They're not even trying to fucking hide it. This is clearly a zombie story. It's not like professional doctor would be like, oh, the symptoms are, you know, you know, I could get, you know, he's saying, blistering of the skin, high fevers, you know, insanity, they'd probably find another way to put it, um, cannibalism, and acting as if a zombie. It's like, really? Like, I, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. My grandpapa looked at the golden wavy wheat field. It was a beauty, all right. Enough to feed a whole town. My grandpa continued to cut logs, deep in thought about the disease. Eventually, he forgot about it and went into his barn. Forgot it ever happened. His barn. <laughs> his barn something a farmer could dream of, with lots of animals that could supply you with food and money. I like to pause for a second and just say, a lot of people, you know, said. It's not really a funny crappy pasta if it's from like the crappy pasta wiki or something like that. This is from the creepy pasta wiki. This is something that they let through the system. This is a story that you could just find on a legitimate creepy pasta site. This was his dream. He had it all. As he entered the barn, he saw the hogs going ballistics. Two hogs, armed with the long, sharp, pointy horns, came at him. My grandpa grabbed a shovel and hit him across the face. You see, my grandpapa was a frail skitty man at the age of 35, but he hits as if he was Mike Tyson. 
My grandpa reported this to the locals. Okay. So, he, does he own the hogs? Like, is he, is he a farmer and he has the hogs domesticated? So, why would he report to the authorities? I don't even know. Diane, what do you think is wrong? My grandpa said to the local doctor. Diane was 30 years old woman. Everybody loved her help. It looks like it's the new disease, Diane said with a hint of fear in her low but powerful voice. <laughs> what does that even sound like? I can't picture that. We must bury these hogs before it spreads and kill the animals these hogs have come into contact with. I mean, you were the boss. They buried the hogs. The disease died out for a few months. And <laughs> it's not how diseases work. If it's going rampant, it's going to keep going rampant, and killing like 12 hogs isn't going to stop it. And you said it started with humans and hopped to animals. And you never specified if it spreads through air or not. So, if it is, you're fucked. It, it doesn't just die down, because if the hogs are infected, that implies it is spread through air, because you're just a farmer, assuming you didn't come into contact with anyone with the disease. They all thought the disease has already died out, but they were wrong. One year later, they didn't know that hell was really going to break loose. My grandpa, at the age of 36, had his firstborn son. My great-grandfather, Noy Charles, he loved to write, and writing was something we all enjoyed. And you should never write again. In the University of Manila, they have his work. We have some of his work, too. On a day where the clouds are gray, but the weather is warm, my grandpa sat with a great grand... <laughs> Sorry. My grandpa sat with my great-grandfather on a log. He thought everything would be alright, but it wasn't. Why are you so obvious with the foreshadowing? You already told us, yeah, shit's gonna hit the fan. Like, you didn't even hide it. You didn't even make it a surprise. You literally said 20 times, you think it's gonna be okay, but it's not. You have no idea what hell is coming up. Like, just get along with it, come on. I got stuff to do. Because on the vegetable-covered hills, a man infected with the disease walked up to the farm. Get off my vegetables, sir, my grandpa said in a calm voice. My grandpa hardly gets mad. He always sees the humorous side of the incident. But the man who was walking upon the hilly patches of the fields didn't stop and attacked my grandpa. My grandpa struck him in the back of the skull with a crunching sound that you could hear as he hit him. The man died instantly. Do I even have words for this? That was so anticlimactic. You know, the zombie was running at him. Might as well just call him zombies at this point. It's like, da dun dun da dun bam Shovel, dead. Didn't even think twice. Didn't even think twice! My grandpa reported this to the locals once again. It was declare the disease has come back for the next few months. My grandpa protected his family, but unfortunate events came on. August 1902, my grandpa's best friends, Jonas Sanchez, or Cheesy, as they like to call him, Boy Morales, Morales, okay, and Mark Ailey, Ailey, whatever, came to our house. People often mistake Jonas and Boy as Spaniards, but they're Filipino. There's a difference. Mark is half Filipino, half Arabic. An awkward mix. So they all sat down for dinner one night. Me and Grandmama and my great-grandfather were at a different house. Any reason for that? You gonna explain yourself? Is that your house? As they gorged the huge meal, Boy caught a high fever. My grandpa freed up a bed for him. It was just Jonas and him now. When they slept, my grandpapa dreamed about the disease coming back and it was all over the news. Did you just document everything? That's the only way you would possibly know this. 100,000 people have been infected. 70% of them are dead. He woke up drenched in sweat. He was petrified of the disease. The only thing worse to... Only what? This sentence doesn't make sense. The only thing worse to lose his loved ones than be infected yourself. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. 
At the moment, he heard blood-curdling screams that was coming from the boys' room. He dashed into the room. My grandpapa, wide-eyed, saw boy insane, as if he was possessed. Boy attacked my grandpa, crawling and kicking. He clutched my grandpa's windpipe and started to crush him. Jonas heard everything and was able to get the boy off my grandpapa. This story, I, I don't know what to say. Like, <sighs> it was reported by the locals the third time. The boy died to a tree. The town's mayor made a decision, he said. These five, comma, heartbreaking words. The infected must be executed, he said tearfully. My grandpa looked at his best friend boy as they cocked the pistol and shot him in the head. <sighs> Comedy. Funeral services were held for the boy a week later. Boy was well respected. He was a man who helped everyone. At the funeral, Jonas and my grandpa were the last to leave. A week later, Jonas caught the disease, but his disease was much worse. He committed cannibalism against his family, his wife, his kids, all dead. A week later, they executed Jonas. Finally, in 1905, a cure was found, but one-fourth of America has died off. Livestock reduced a huge amount. The government sealed the information not letting anyone know about it. I'm one of the few. Four fucking dots after that. Oh, God. They say the disease is still lingering. An unfortunate one may be infected through meats of animals. Something, Something to, to think, think about before you order your next cheeseburger. This wouldn't be the most terrible thing on the planet if you had supposed half-assed proof at least, but you don't, you, you wrote it, you probably didn't even proofread it. You, you typed it up, thought it was the best thing on the planet, and uh, LOL Skeleton kept it because, you know, he's fucking like that. This story shouldn't exist. enough surplus food for most, if not all, of the world. Something, Something to, to think, think about before you order your next cheeseburger.